Hi folks, let's chat for a bit about what is spatial technology. People have always been fascinated with investigating their home, the Earth. Geography, as you probably are well aware, is an ancient discipline with modern day significance. In my view, geography is more relevant than ever before, as issues of climate change, economic globalization, urban sprawl, biodiversity loss, sustainable agriculture, water quality and quantity, crime, cultural diversity, energy, tourism, political instability, and natural hazards, and more, grow in importance on a global scale, but also increasingly affect our everyday lives. Geography is concerned with all of the relevant issues of our time, of our 21st century world, because all of these issues have a geographic component. Now, maps have always been essential tools for the geographer. For centuries, maps stirred imaginations and inspired explorations of the unknown. Today, maps are created and used in a digital environment within spatial technology. Within spatial technology, maps are dynamic. Map scale, symbology, and content can all be changed so that the issue can be better understood. That's the ultimate goal. These maps are no longer simply reference documents that help us understand where things are, like, okay, where is Yemen? Pull it down from the wall, okay, there it is, next. Nothing against paper maps, but they're more than reference documents. They help us understand, sure, where things are, but also can help us understand why things are where they are and help us plan for a more sustainable future. Digital maps created with and viewed within spatial technology can be combined with other maps and information, charts, stories, and multimedia. Now let's talk about components of spatial technology. Spatial technology includes geographic information systems, or GIS, remote sensing, and global positioning systems, GPS, or more accurately, global navigational satellite systems, or GNSS. Now, GIS, Geographic Information Systems, is oftentimes referred to as geotechnologies or geomatics, depending on what part of the world you are in. Spatial technologies, I think, fits in really well with all of those terms. But no matter what terms you're using, combining GIS, remote sensing, and GNSS, spatial technology helps people make everyday decisions more effectively and efficiently. Now, you may recall the core GIS definitions from your university textbooks, which usually included the following. GIS is composed of hardware, software, data, methods, tools, models, and procedures, and people. Another useful and off-sited definition is GIS is a system for collecting, managing, manipulating, analysis, and presenting spatially referenced data. Still another definition is that a GIS enables us to capture, model, store, manage, and present complex systems. Another way to conceptualize GIS is to break apart its three words. G, or the geographic component, refers to the location component that GIS has. Everything in a GIS is referenced to a real-world coordinate. These coordinates can be a single point, line, a polygon, or define the starting point and extent of a grid or image. So the G part is like the map or a satellite image or uh, a 3D representation of the Earth. The I or the information part refers to the informational database behind the spatial data. A geodatabase, if you will, usually stored as a table or a set of related tables, including spatial fields such as latitude, longitude, or a street address or city names. And a spatial field such as the housing type or number of people between 10 and 19 years old, that type of thing. The S or system component ties the G and the I segments together. One can select a feature using the map or via a row in the data table. The S component ensures that a GIS is not just a set of graphics floating around in cyberspace, but that the attributes are always linked to the map feature. By combining the spatial with the aspatial, we create a holistic view of the world. GIS data are analyzed in layers. Think of the old transparencies that you used to maybe had in the classroom, which can cover such themes as land use, land cover, hydrography, zoning, ecoregions, transportation, elevation, climate, and more. The process-oriented definition of GIS is that a GIS is a computer-based system that provides for the collection, storage, analysis, and display of georeference data. A problem-solving definition of GIS is a GIS is a decision support system 
involving the integration of spatially referenced data in a problem-solving environment. More recently, some definitions have focused on GIS moving from a system of records to a system of engagement, engaging citizens in their communities. GIS now supports a mechanism by which ordinary citizens, for example, can have a greater role in their own local government. For example, where should the urban greenway be planned? Can the city fix the broken sidewalk in my neighborhood? Where are the floodwaters scheduled to be in two hours? That type of thing. So spatial technology, folks, is a platform. About five years ago, GIS began to transition from a set of tools into a platform that people can build on. Platforms are powerful because people can build their own applications on them. Think of the iOS on iPhones that app developers build on, or HTML and CSS that are used to develop interactive web pages. Each of these definitions of GIS or spatial technology has its place. They all help us to conceptualize what GIS is and contribute to the richness of its evolving nature. So there's different terms, the same technology, but it's always about where. GIS is part of the geotechnologies or spatial technology. In some places around the world, it may be called geomatics, geoinformatics, or location analytics. But again, no matter what it's called, GIS is all about solving spatial problems in our world, from local to global scale. It's an applied geography. It may be so hidden and behind the scenes that you don't really think about it, kind of like an elevator. You get in, punch a few buttons, and expect it to work. But GIS powers everything from the energy used in the lab or the classroom that you're using right now to the breakfast food you ate this morning. More about this later. But in all these definitions, GIS and spatial technology are concerned about the where question. And it's all about the relationships. So, for example, what is the relationship between birth rate and life expectancy? Why does this relationship exist? How does acid mine drainage in a mountain range affect water quality downstream? How will climate change affect global food production? Students using spatial technology explore the relationships between people, climate, land use, vegetation, river systems, aquifers, landforms, soils, and much more. With the flood of information available today, students need to be able to deal with uncertainty about data to understand its limitations with regard to error and omissions. And to effectively manage it, they need to be able to identify bad maps as well as good maps. What makes a map good or bad? Spatial technology also provides students with skills in data management, art and design, communication, and analysis. So, spatial technology is all about solving problems. When undertaking an inquiry, geographers observe and ask questions. They collect and record and present data, and finally interpret and analyze data before making conclusions about their investigation. Spatial technologies were created in the first place to solve real problems by applying this inquiry model through powerful geodatabases, visualizations, and analytical techniques, and rich geospatial datasets in the form of 2D and 3D maps and imagery. Spatial technology encourages exploration of content knowledge and fieldwork. Thanks.